Hi guys, welcome in to Rover Sports Tonight. What I wanted to talk about is I wanted to talk about Shane Waldron, the coach of the LA Rams. And I wanted to do this in a way where I would talk about Shane Waldron, but I would also talk about the New York Giants and an evaluation of of Pat Shermer, the head coach of the New York Giants. Pat Shermer thus far is 1-7 with the New York Giants. He has Eli Manning at quarterback, and we all know that Eli Manning is not a good quarterback anymore. In fact, Eli Manning should be benched for Kyle Lalletta before the San Francisco game. And a lot of people want to say that Giants fans were spoiled last year when the Eli benching came out of nowhere. Because Ben McAdoo, in a desperate attempt to save his job, he somehow, he put Geno Smith in the game. And I know Eli wasn't playing very well last year. But the point is, Ben McAdoo, this offensive scheme was terrible. There was no running back. Odell was hurt. The wide receivers were all hurt, so there was an excuse for the offense to be sucking, and Ben McAdoo was just pretty much a shitty coach in general. So when Eli was benched, the the streak was broken. That was that was really difficult on Giants fans because you thought that at the time Ben McAdoo would have maybe been coming back, and you thought the owner turned on Eli Manning in a classless way. Because you thought the owner selected this jerk, Ben McAdoo, and didn't select Eli Manning. It was Eli versus Ben McAdoo. This year, it's different. Saquon Barkley is there. Eli Manning now had a new coach in Pat Shermer, who was decent in the league. A new scheme. Evan Ingram healthy. Sterling Shepard healthy, a left tackle that is making $16 million a year in Nate Solder, a second round Will Hernandez, Brett Jones, who was, I know he's been hurt, Um, you bring in Jacksonville people like Omame, Um, there was no excuses for Eli to be this putrid this year. And now everybody can see that Eli's not the guy. And they can comfortably see that Eli is not the guy, okay? Because now it's been two years of disaster. And now I think it's perfectly appropriate to put in Kyle Lawletta. I think putting in Alex Tanny um, would be dumb because Tanny is older. Tanny's a journeyman. He's not going to be the solution. Kyle Lalletta could be lightning in a bottle. He could be the solution. So first off, start Kyle Lalletta. It was a traffic violation. He paid his dues to the cop. Um, it was a dumb decision. Terrible driving by Lalletta in that in that Jaguar. Dumb, dumb decision. But again. He's a kid, and he's going to make mistakes. And in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a malicious mistake, and it wasn't something where he was doing drugs and he could get addicted to drugs, which could really be problematic for a while. And it's not a malicious, violent error. Uh, You can argue if he purposely wanted to hit somebody with his car, it could be violent, but I don't think that that was the intention at all from everything I have read. And I would be fine with Lawletta starting against San Francisco. I wasn't that bothered by the arrest. I was not. It's a traffic violation. Now, you guys might think differently. Put your comment below about Kyle Lawletta. But let's talk about Pat Shermer, because a lot of this video is going to be about Pat Shermer. He's 1-7 when he was with the Cleveland Browns, and everybody sucks in Cleveland. Pat Shermer's record wasn't that good either. In fact, I'm going to look up now Pat Shermer's record. Let's look at Pat Shermer this year, though. Pat Shermer's offense versus the Jacksonville Jaguars with Eli Manning and Saquon Barkley. 
They had one good run in that game. Otherwise, it was it was not very good play calling. The Dallas game was horribly called. Uh, if you guys remember, there were several dumb running plays, uh, several not handing the ball to Saquon Barkley, bad screen calls. I remember that Dallas game was a complete and total disaster. The Houston game, Shermer executed well. It was short passing. It was fine. It wasn't the most exotic thing in the world, but it was an efficient game that won. The Saints game was a damn joke. Even up 7-0, Pat Shermer lacked the aggressiveness that you'd look for in a head coach with taking shots. The Carolina game was different. He had a great week. Not only did the offense put up big time points, not only was Eli throwing down the field, but he also had a good press conference where he actually showed some life with this whole Odell, Josina Anderson interview. Now the thing about Pat Shermer is that Pat Shermer is a guy that is pretty, let, let's just call it how it is. He's boring in these interviews. He's not the greatest at rallying guys, at rallying teams. And offensively, I'm not enthused by Pat Shermer. I don't think he's a wizard with calling pass plays. If he was a wizard, I think Eli, I think guys would be running more open all the time. Um, I believe that if Sean McVay had the same offense, that Eli Manning would be putting up good numbers. Not Jared Goff numbers, but the team would be winning games. I believe if Kyle Shanahan was over here with Eli, Odell, and Saquon, the team would not be 1-7. and seven. So I do blame the coach, in part for 1-7. I also blame the quarterback. I blame Nate Solder not progressing. I blame a little bit on James Betcher and the defense a tiny bit. Actually, a decent amount. There were some games where the defense just completely fell apart, and there were moments where the defense fell apart. But Pat Shermer's definitely responsible for this 1-7 start. So here's Pat Shermer. Here's his damn record, okay? His overall record as a head coach, he's 11 and 30 as a head football coach. In Cleveland, he went 4 and 12 and 5 and 11. With the Eagles, he had one interim game where he was 1 and 0 and now he's 1 and 7. Overall, he is 11 and 30 with a winning percentage of 268 over 4 years. Now, it was in Cleveland, right? Even Bill Belichick was in Cleveland and only won one playoff game with Nick Saban as his defensive coordinator and Jim Schwartz and, and Phil Savage and all those guys, right? Right? But um, so far, it's looking hideous. Now, what I'm going to say right here is also the the um, kind of the main point of my video that I want to make to you guys. And I want to propose this to you guys. And I want you to see if this somehow makes sense to you. And I know that Niner fans, I don't really do a lot of Niner videos anymore. I, I'm sorry for that. Sometimes I'll be able to do it. Sometimes I won't. If you guys unsubscribe, I totally get it. I'll try to do a stream tomorrow. I'll try my best. Uh, I'll try to do more Niner content. But let's talk about now the wild card, who could be the Messiah. Let's talk about somebody now that could be the Savior. Because when you look... When you look at, hold on, I'm pulling up this guy's bio. When you look at coaches, okay, when you look at coaches in the NFL, it used to be that quarterbacks won championships. And to that, I kind of agree. Big Ben, Drew Brees, um, Aaron Rodgers with Mike McCarthy, uh, Russell Wilson, right? But if you really look more closely than that, look at the landscape of, of football right now. Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the NFC North, and yet the Chicago Bears and Mitchell Trubisky are winning the NFC North. Last year, well, you did have Deshaun Watson. He is a very good quarterback, and quarterbacks are important, and Deshaun is winning that division. Drew Brees is important, but Sean Payton is also an elite-level coach. But I can argue that Russell Wilson is better than Jared Goff. Russell Wilson started in three Super Bowl champion, two Super Bowl championships. He has so many postseason wins. He probably has five postseason wins. He is more elusive than Jared Goff, a stronger arm than Jared Goff, better instincts than Goff, hangs in the pocket more than Goff, better talent than Jared Goff. 
more accomplished. And yet his team is not doing well. It's Jared Goff. It's the rookie deal. It's Sean McVay. Um, Kyle Shanahan. Matt Nagy. Andy Reid took a guy and, and, and Patrick Mahomes. The bottom line is if you have a sensational coach now in NFL football with the way that offenses are going, you are going to be golden. You are going to be a franchise that goes from worst to first. You can go from the dungeons of the NFL to the penthouse, just like freaking Sean McVay. The Rams, when they had Jeff Fisher, were 8-8, eight and 6-10, eight, and ten, complete. Nobody would watch them. They were so boring and awful. Sean McVay comes in there, and in one year, Todd Gurley's almost an MVP. Aaron Donald's the Defensive Player of the Year. They're hosting a playoff game. Sean McVay wins Coach of the Year. Jared Goff's a completely different guy. If you nail your head coaching higher, your franchise is changed in an instant. That's why I love the NFL. Because in the NFL, you can have a team like the Rams and they can catapult to the top with an elite level head coach. In the NBA, you are not going to compete with the Warriors even if you have a terrific, terrific head coach. It's not like even Brad Stevens last year could compete with Golden State. You know what's going to happen in the NBA. You know what's going to transpire at the end of the year. In football, right now, we are seeing it with Matt Nagy. We are seeing it a little bit with Matt Patricia. New coaches come in, infuse something new, and your franchise is completely different, for better or for worse. Some of these guys might bust. Steve Wilkes might bust. Um, Frank Reich might bust. What I am going to tell you now, I've been delaying it too long, is I believe that I have found the next Sean McVay. And you guys may laugh, you guys may point to my record of Davis Webb and being completely wrong about some people so far. But I got Mahomes right. I get a couple of things right. I get things wrong. I get things right. I believe, I'm going to say this right now, because I like making predictions before things happen. It's not exciting now to say Pat Mahomes is going to be incredible. But back in May and July, when I was saying that Patrick Mahomes was going to be an MVP candidate, when I said that, When I said that the Chiefs would be one of the best offenses of all time, like the greatest show on turf, and there's a couple of people in here that have watched me say that, that was a special prediction that that held up. That was interesting. Now you say it, it it, it has no merit. When I said after the national title game that Tua is going to be the best NFL quarterback for the next 15 years, that's a fun statement. It's not as much fun two years later when he's in the NFL and he's Carson Wentz, he's he's Mahomes, he's Jared Goff. Then that statement's not fun anymore. Shane Waldron is fun to talk about because Shane Waldron is the tight ends coach and pass game coordinator of the LA Rams. And I like projecting who's going to be the next hot name, who's going to be the future of the NFL, what person will it be, and I believe it's Shane Waldron. I believe Shane Waldron will win multiple Super Bowls. Shane Waldron will be one of the best coaches ever in NFL history. He will be up there with Sean McVay. And the New York Giants, if I were running the if I were running the New York Giants, this might seem impulsive. It's definitely impulsive. I would hire Shane Waldron. Because let's look at Shane Waldron's credentials. First off, this guy is born in Portland, Oregon. One of the most progressive cities in the country. But that's not really my argument. My argument is he went to Notre Dame. He he went to Tufts in Massachusetts. That's a very bright school for people who do math. It's it's a a school for people that are a lot brighter than me. Okay? Um, Incredible school. Uh, Tufts University. Something I couldn't even sniff. You know, um, something if you put steroids in my brain, I would not even come close to that place. Then he went to Notre Dame from 2005 to 2007. Charlie Weiss, Notre Dame, big college football place. He sees how college football is run, okay? This guy is only 39, by the way. He's not even 40 years old yet. Then, guess where he went? The holy grail of coaching. He went to New England, Followed Charlie Weiss from Notre Dame to New England in 2008, okay? 2008, he became the tight ends coach in 2008. Went to the United Football League for a little bit. 
But the bottom line is he is Bill Belichickian roots. He went to Tufts Business School. He's a smart guy. And then in 2017, he was the tight ends coach for the Rams. Now he is the passing game coordinator. Passing game coordinator. You know what passing game coordinators come up with? They come up with routes that are excellent. And look at Cooper Cup. Look at Brandon Cooks. Look at how these guys run their routes. Look at how precise everything is in that passing game for Jared Goff. Look at how simplified the game plan is. Look at how special those wide receivers are. I mean, you look at Sterling Shepard, and if I were to tell you two years ago that Robert Woods would be one of the most solid wide receivers on the Super Bowl team, you would laugh me out of a room. If I were to tell you that a kid from Eastern Washington, you know, Cooper Cup, a 5'10 kid, would be one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, you would think I'm crazy. You would think that I'm crazy and even that Jared Goff could turn into this special of a player that he's an MVP candidate after the year he had with Jeff Fisher. And that is all Shane Waldron. He's 39 years old, Tufts, Bill Belichick. Um, passing game coordinator for Sean McVay. He he is only 40 years old. He's had experience in college. He's had experience at the NFL. He went overseas. He's had experience at every single level. You hear this guy talk. This guy has failed at no place ever. You hear him talk. Yes, he sounds a little bit nerdy. Yes, he does sound that way. A tiny bit egotistical. But the thing about him is he's showing a little bit of sense of humor. His media game is getting better. My biggest fear with him is that he might be like an Adam Gase. I hope he's not. Where he might turn out to be an egotistical guy who doesn't communicate, who doesn't communicate with his players, who doesn't have cohesiveness and the locker room doesn't like him. And I worry about his personality. I worry about his him connecting to players more. That's my biggest fear. Because offensively, <sighs> I'm so confident in this guy's ability to draw plays. I think this guy is a genius from what I watch the Rams do. How they isolate Cooper Cup on linebackers. How they send Brandon Cooks on post routes. How they are aggressive. How they operate the run game. And also, I'm more confident in this guy because he's been under Sean McVay. Because um, Sean McVay is the best at the NFL at keeping a locker room together. He's only, Sean McVay is like only 34 years old. And Sean McVay is a guy that communicates with his players in, in a brilliant, brilliant manner. Sean McVay, that's probably maybe even his best attribute is is the personality of McVay, how he keeps the team together, the chemistry, the locker room, the culture that McVay sets, the personality side. He is the best, the most likable coach to work for in the NFL. High energy, chest bumping players, serious but yet really fun. Um, doesn't overload his players, very cognizant psychologically. That's the kind of stuff in coaches that I absolutely love. And I think Shane Waldron is going to be a name like a Bill Belichick. And I want the Giants to get the next Bill Belichick. And I believe that Shane Waldron could be that. I'm going to put my name on it. I believe Shane Waldron will be so special. And listen, guys, I'll be I'll be objective. You know, um, this year I had the 49ers doing really well. Um, This year I said that Jared Goff wasn't going to be that good. I told you I was wrong. I said that the Tampa Bay Bucks would make the playoffs, and objectively, that's looking like it's going to be wrong. Um, I'll tell you if I'm wrong about Shane Waldron, but I think it's entertaining to be one of the first guys to put your name on something. And I'm going to do it here on this show for you guys. So Shane Waldron is my guy. I hope that the Giants get him. I know that it's so unrealistic. It's probably not going to happen. But whatever franchise gets him, I think he's going to be an absolute rock star, a complete stud. And I think he's so much better than Pat Shermer. So much better. When you compare these two guys, I think it's night and day. I think the Giants will regret keeping Pat Shermer and not hiring Waldron. Don't give me this excuse of, you can't fire Pat Shermer, it's only a year. When you have this special of a candidate, you need to go out there and and get him. This is a million-dollar business, again, million-dollar business, and the NFL 
you know, you got to put the best players and coaches in place to be successful. And Giants fans have been suffering long enough. Shane Waldron would be great. I know he's probably not going to go there. Pat Shermer is better than Ben McAdoo. You don't want to be the boy who cries wolf every single year and demand a new coach. Pat's not getting it done. I just think Pat is average. He is not terrible. He is just going to be okay. I'll be really stunned if Pat Shermer won a playoff game, and I'd even be stunned if he was here in two more years after next year. That's how stunned I would be. Um, and, and, and it might be sickening watching Shane Waldron be a freaking beast, but here I am making this video, and we'll see how this video passes over time. We'll see how this video relays over time. 20 minutes with you guys. Probably doing a stream tomorrow. It's been a long day. Thanks, guys, for hanging in, watching the vid. Take care.